The first reading for this morning, this Easter Sunday, recorded in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, beginning at verse 34. These lessons are printed on the back page of your worship folder. Then Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message was spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the first lesson. Please turn to page 272 in the front of the hymnal. We will read Psalm 118. We're going to read the first two verses, and then verses 14 through 24. I'll read the odd number verses. You read the even number verses. Psalm 118, page 272. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let, Let Israel now proclaim his, his mercy endures forever. Continuing at verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I will I not die, die but, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, and he did not hand me over to death. Open, Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will, I will enter them. I will, I will offer, offer thanks to the Lord. Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will, I will give thanks to you, for you, you answered me and have, and have become my salvation. salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This, this is the is Lord's the doing, and, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Here ends the psalm. Very nicely done, by the way. I didn't notice the fact that we went from verse 2, which was an even number, to verse 14, which was also an even number. You were supposed to be reading the even numbers, but instead you just let me go ahead and read the next verse, and we just kept alternating back and forth, and it worked out just fine. <coughs> Very clever people, these Christians. Our second reading, from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you also are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more, to five, more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, 
most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Here ends the second lesson. We rise to the good news of the gospel. This is the gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. 